This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So with Gene and Chris, we're back on the Paracast, and in a few moments we'll be joined by three guests for a Women in Ufology Roundtable, focusing, of course, on contributions of women, why more women aren't involved in the field, at least publicly. I mean, when you look at the listings of guests for the UFO conventions, you know, we can be like the Academy Awards last year, white and male. So we'll see what happens there. By the way, before we even get into that, and this is going to be really a fascinating episode, I wanted to mention the appearance last week of Jim Mars and the response we had from listeners to it. Now, I guess if you're wondering why he was pushing this old book from L. Ron Hubbard, Battlefield Earth. It's because the PR people from the publisher sent Jim to us. So, you know, they gave a little announcement. No big deal unless, you know, you don't like the book or you realize it's a publisher connected with Scientology and you don't like that, but we never talked about that. What I think upset a few people, like half the messages in response to the Mars appearance were not so much about his conspiracy theories. It was about his political beliefs, which was what? We kind of shut him down after about two minutes, Chris? Well, I don't even think we went long enough uh, for us to really determine much of anything. As soon as I felt it going in a direction that uh, might be, uh, I don't know, make some of our, our listeners squirm, I did I did kind of shut it down. Um, I, I felt there was way too much uh, material that we could talk about uh, from his work. We didn't even scratch the surface, really. We spent way too much time on Kennedy, as far as I'm concerned. Some of his books were quite influential, uh, I think, in, in uh, many people's minds in terms of, of, of the field actually having writers who um, – <laughs> slumming, I guess uh, would be the word. But Jim Mars is one of the more talented researchers and writers uh, who ha- have stooped down uh, to the to the great unwashed masses and, and graced us with his, his presence uh, in terms of his writing skill and his, his abilities. I, I really uh, – I look up to the man. I've, I've read many of his books – in a, a number of genres, all conspiracy, obviously, because uh, that's kind of where he, he, he hangs his hat. You know, I really feel that uh, we need more writers like Jim Mars, like uh, the quality of a writing of a, of a Whitley Strieber. There just aren't, aren't, aren't enough. One of the reasons why I think the mainstream doesn't take it seriously is because the quality of writing is really not, not where it needs to be. Unfortunately, we're going into an age of, uh, you know, of, of, of sound bites of sound bites. So writing quality, what's writing quality? For instance, in, in rock and roll, I've been a big fan of rock and roll uh, uh, criticism, uh, rock critics uh, all the way back into the 60s when I was a kid. And of course, uh, you know, my my many times I profess my admiration for writers such as Hunter Thompson, you know, and some of the offshoots, the second generation of, of beat writers. We need more people that are irreverent, that are willing to uh, turn a phrase and, and, and coin terms and, and that sort of thing. It's it's too boring. It's too staid. It's too, you know, predictable. You know, this old paradigm uh, in terms of writing style is just not going to inspire any of the kids in this day and age again i i really um admire jim for for slumming uh with some of us and i aspire to uh to a level of writing that's a little bit more uh cutting edge a little bit more edgy and and i think uh jim if he brought that kind of edginess uh to his actual writing style i think um <laughs> he'd be even better uh but y- you just can't knock the guy for for trying and you know, anybody that thinks that uh, there was a problem with the episode because he was he was pumping battlefield earth which i i felt was kind of weird um i tried to point out to him it was probably it's on many people's uh critics uh worst movie of all time list he said well yeah but the audio book is really good and it's like i'm not going to listen to 40 hours of uh battlefield earth stuff i mean people just don't do that anymore unless they're 
in serious need of a life, Gene. <laughs> you know, the thing here is that we shouldn't judge the validity of his arguments because he has one political viewpoint or another. And, and based on what he said there and based on a private email I had with him afterwards, yes, he obviously is very conservative in his political views. It doesn't matter. That's not what's going to make the solution to the Kennedy assassination any different or 9-11 or UFOs or disclosure, anything that you can attach something conspiratorial to. It doesn't matter what his political beliefs are. He started in life as a working journalist and worked in that business for a long time. And if we look at what he says and the facts and forget whether a guy is liberal or conservative, I think that's the point. We should look at that. I mean, I have the same viewpoint when people get a little upset because someone in show business is conservative. John Voigt's conservative and and Tom Hanks is liberal or something. Who cares? There are people who are citizens of the United States. They have a well, right to... They're entertainers. To, so, they're entertainers. Know, cut everybody some slack. Right. I mean, we should worry about the fact that their films, are whether they're good or bad, that's what we worry about. We're not paying to hear their politics. If they want to express it, they have the right like any other citizen. But when it comes to what they do for a living, they entertain us. Who cares what their politics are? Why should we worry about it? Don't watch Ray Donovan on TV because John Voigt's a conservative. What about the others who are not? We can't have that kind of thing. I think people are just entitled to believe what they believe. I mean, if we focus on our subjects, which is UFOs and everything and Bigfoot and all these subjects, doesn't matter what the politics are, unless it impacts it, you know, like government secrecy or something. Well, well, you know, again, I, I, I think uh, this is a good, you know, kind of a lead into today's show. Uh, I remember talking with Erica uh, Lukes uh, uh, several months ago about problems that she has had in the field of of, of ufology and and being number one uh, taken uh, seriously, number two not uh, tokenized and, and made uh, into some sort of object by people, uh, you know, in, in private, uh, people in the field. Um, I, I find that horrific. Um, and and the, the very idea that um, women can make highly effective and, and in some cases way more effective investigators out in the field than men uh, for the rank and file, of the mainstream of the good old boys in ufology, I mean, that's blasphemy. Um, however, I, I think uh, today's segment is going to show how the culture is changing, and um, and I, I really feel that there uh, we need to use all the tools in our <laughs> toolkits as investigators, and we need to maximize um, our potential, and that means uh, I think assigning uh, responsibilities uh, more so uh, to women, especially in areas where women just seem to have a, a, I think, do a better job in many ways than, than men can do. And I've seen it firsthand. I've, I've worked with men, uh, men in the field and I've worked with women in the field. And the, I can say almost, you know, almost every instance with one or two exceptions, the women have come through um, actually being more effective, being more, uh, I think, uh, putting putting uh, experiencers and putting witnesses, I think, at ease quick uh, in, a, in a quicker manner, and also, um, I think, in a more effective manner that elicits uh, opening up and, and details coming out of experiences that that maybe a man couldn't get. And of course, this is all subjective uh, in terms of in my my own opinion. But I think today we're going to really, um, you know, I have, no one's ever done this before, Gene. This is the first time we've had a roundtable of women discussing women's role in paranormal research and uh, the problems and the the pratfalls and uh, and some of the things that we need to really discuss and 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 look at, I think, in depth. And and this is, uh, I think, this is hopefully going to be a clarion call for everybody else to. Uh, you know, start to adjust their thinking when it comes to gender-specific uh, investigators. And, um, and well, <laughs> let's bring it on. Here, let me, let me play my, my, my working with rhinos video, which um, I've played a number of times on the show. It's I don't have time now. I'm over time. Can we do it at the beginning of the next one? 
with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com. Virtual care anywhere. All right, guys, we're ready for our Four Seasons sunroom, and Daddy's going to get a rec room with refreshments. Oh, no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym, my gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room, weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait, a family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to hear more about these great offers from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for Four Seasons Now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-848-6333. That's 800-848-6333. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. There we go. I don't know what to say. It's baby rhinos uh, that are hungry. Uh, they need milk, and they need it fast. Okay. Announce our guests for us, Chris. Well, I mentioned Erica Lukes. 
former uh, state director of MUFON, and a uh, just, I, I think, uh, a really fun, uh, inspiring a woman for others looking to get into the field, both male and female. Very serious uh, attitude, has uh, all the skills needed to uh, be a, a good investigator like she is. And she's run into problems um, over the years during her um, emerging career, uh, if you want to call it that, of uh, an investigator. Of course, Kath Kathleen Martin uh, is the niece of Betty Hill, one of the first <laughs> female figures, really, in the history of ufology, when you think about it, going all the way back to 62 and the, the, the Hill abduction in New Hampshire. Kathleen's a niece. Uh, she's been in the field for at least a decade, if not longer. She's written a number of books. She's in charge of MUFON's uh, induction research. And then we have Chase uh, Klutzy, who uh, I met uh, a number of years ago in, in uh, Minneapolis at a conference. I was very struck by her uh, dedication, her seriousness about getting to the bottom of, of these mysteries. Um, she's also become a radio personality, as has Erica, with their own shows. Uh, uh, Chase is in, involved in uh, very heavily with MUFON. She's one of the chief, uh, I think she's in charge of investigations, or one of the ones in charge. Uh, We'll have to get a little um, uh, clarity on that. But um, I think that these uh, three ladies are, are real good examples to bring to a roundtable to discuss issues surrounding uh, women's role in ufology, problems that we've had up to this point, possible ways to work around that, um, how uh, women and men uh, can be best utilized in investigations and in research. Uh, I think Kathleen has done a, a marvelous job uh, working with abductees. Um, she's definitely a, the go-to person, I think, in my mind, uh, for anyone who wants to uh, explore experiences that they've had that they, they really need to get a handle on. I've recommended a number of people to her, um, uh, in fact, recently. So I, I think um, uh, Chase, uh, Erica, uh, Kathleen, are, are three women that can really help us out a lot in, in really gauging you know, the next phase of ufology and how, how we can best marshal our, our assets and really maximize our potential. Um, it, it can't be gender specific. It can't be the good old boys network anymore. Uh, things have got to change. You know, Erica, since you kind of got to start on this. First of all, I want to thank you and Chris for having this roundtable. I think this is important, especially as we try to encourage a younger generation to become active in this field. And I know that there are some very serious issues that do need to be addressed with women in this field. And Kathleen probably knows better than anyone about the the hardships that women have faced over the decades. And I believe that she will have some good input for all of us to engage a younger generation, specifically women. Kathleen. Yes. There you are. Good to see you again. I think I saw you like, what was it, a week or so ago at the International UFO Conference. You were sitting next yes. to Stanton Friedman. Yes, and I saw you walk by briefly. <laughs> it was a brief trip because I was dead tired. Yes. So I just oh, kind of sorry. waved my way. Now, uh -huh. you, you were mentioning to me there was a site that you saw. Was it a Wikipedia site that listed the contribution of women in ufology over the years? And, of course, one of the people prominently mentioned is the woman who was one of the directors of the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, APRO, Carl Lorenzen. Yes. Now, before we get started about Carl Lorenzen, I have a story about her that isn't very pleasant. Uh-oh. We're going to be fair, okay? <laughs> now, I was really young, young whippersnapper, and I put out a rather nice-looking UFO magazine, I thought, called UFO Reporter, which is not an exclusive name with us, but it has been used a couple of times. And we ran a story about the Sicaro, New Mexico case. And what we did is we summarized the Lorenzen's report in Fate magazine. But, of course, being that it was fair use, we didn't quote much, we paraphrased it, you know, normal journalistic, I hope, coverage. She took umbrage on it, feeling that we published too much of that material and therefore asked me to give her $100 to cover her costs. And we had an exchange of letters, snail mail. This is, of course, the 1960s, back and forth. And I kind of said, are you serious? 
Never heard from her again. Okay. <laughs> 10 years later, I don't know to the day or not. 10 years later, I meet her at a UFO convention in Arkansas, I believe. And she still remembered and she still held a grudge against me. Oh, you're that guy who ran that story about Sicaro. She wouldn't give it a rest. So she may have done some pretty great things in ufology, but she could be a little crusty. Just saying. Yes, and I know that she uh, would be terribly upset when people ran stories that were not entirely accurate. And I'm not talking about yours. I haven't seen yours. But I did read uh, a little bit about uh, the Socorro investigation that she was very heavily involved in. And uh, she did make the comment that somebody had written an article and had made, I believe it was six mistakes in whatever it was. It might have been somebody else in the field and not you, but uh, she uh, was a person who was a stickler for accuracy. And, And that's a good thing to be. She was a highly intelligent woman. Uh, she was the author of several books on UFOs. The, the person who started the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, uh, she started out in Wisconsin, and uh, then she and her husband, who was also the co-director of APRO, uh, had a job in Arizona. And so they... They ended up settling in Tucson, Arizona, and this is how she came to know Dr. James McDonald, the late, great Dr. James McDonald, who was a physicist and probably the finest uh, professional who ever lived with regard to the investigation of UFOs uh, from a scientific standpoint. I have a great deal of, of respect for him and for Coral Lorenzen as well, because she was a strong woman early in our time, in our UFO uh, times, when women were often at home and uh, took a secondary role, and even intelligent women, highly intelligent and educated women, were housewives. Chase Kletsky, Erica Lukes, Kathleen Martin with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Have you ever wanted a shortcut to getting the underground secrets to making money online and seriously grow your business? Whether it's a new business, a part-time income, or an existing business, you have this incredible limited offer to get a copy of this Amazon best-selling book on dot-com success for free. Uncover the success factors to make your business ignite. Go to secretsignite.com. That's secretsignite.com. Get your free copy now. Go to secretsignite.com. You may own a knife, but if it's not an indie hammered knife, it's not a knife. From the forge to the grinder to the sheath, each indie hammered knife is handcrafted using God-given talent. The result is the sharpest edge a knife can have and a true work of art. See a variety of knives and the complete knife kit at ihknives.com. Indie hammered knives, custom knives made in America. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. 
Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more. And this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. What would your life be like if you woke up each morning with new vitality, feeling better than you have in years, and you noticed a difference in your sleeping patterns, blood sugar levels, and had a sense of well-being overall? There's something that is changing thousands of people's lives, and you could be one of them. It's called Heart and Body Extract. Sharon Harris, co-creator of Heart and Body Extract, talks about the positive effects of Heart and Body Extract. What happens with the formula Heart and Body Extract is it's giving the body the necessary vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, and phytonutrients so, so the body will heal itself. And yes, the body does have the ability to balance blood pressure, balance cholesterol, clean and unclog the arteries. It can also work on uh, balancing the circulation for diabetics. So the body is an amazing thing. It simply needs some help so it has the tools to heal itself. Heart and Body Extract gets results. To order your two-month supply, call now, toll-free at 866-295-5305. Order online at hbextract.com. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Our Women's Roundtable episode of the Paracast with Chase and Erica and Kathleen. Just to point out here, as I said, Carl Lorenzen's objection was not about the factual content. She never corrected anything. I think she felt maybe we used too many quotes or too much of her material. I don't know. It just seemed to be kind of ridiculous because we're in a situation here where we hope that the information is shared among the UFO community and the work they did. I always had a close relationship with the people from Fate Magazine, the Fullers, so... I don't know what really got her upset there. But it wasn't yeah. about the well, factual accuracy. If she pointed out something that was wrong, I would have been happy to correct it. Just let so. me make one more statement. And that is that as long as you keep the use of someone else's material within copyright law, and there are specific copyright laws on the amount of information you can use, and you footnote it, and you give references, then there should not be a problem. Well, I think we followed fair use. I was studying journalism in school, and I think we copied fair use. It was a short piece. Most of it was my words. And I think we may have carried a few quotes. Unfortunately, as some people know, fair use is a gray area. But fair use could mean a sentence here, a paragraph there. It doesn't mean copying extensive portions like a certain book in the political realm where somebody wrote a best-selling book or something. And they found out that they had plagiarized a large portion of it. That book was withdrawn. You know, I understand that. But no, I see your point there. Chase, welcome back to the Paracast. It's so great to be with you guys. Hi, Chris. Chase, welcome back. Happy Thank spring. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here basking in a beautiful spring day here in Arizona. We're up in the uh, low 70s. It's glo- global warming at its finest. <laughs> Absolutely. We've had 70s, 80s the entire winter. I, I wow. should complain, but I'm not going to. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, that's fabulous. What part of the country is that? South Georgia. But you're right near Florida, right? 
I am um, on the East Coast, so it, it's a weather pattern that comes, you know, straight up the Atlantic Ocean. So we mirror what Orlando's getting, not necessarily Atlanta, which is, you know, six and a half hours away. They can be having snow. We're still basking in 75. Well, that's nice, at least. Now, in your experience working with MUFON, getting on with a pretty high position, did you find it more difficult as a woman to gain acceptance as a skilled, experienced UFO investigator? Well, I've been with MUFON for quite some time, and I think most people forget that I did take a little break. I was with them for 18 years, and I was a field investigator. So it wasn't until 2010 where I was given a shot for any kind of position other than that. And it was awesome because MUFON had just put out an announcement that they were looking to revise the star team program after Bigelow had left. You know, anybody, you know, a one page summary of what your skills are and, and what you would bring to the position. Not thinking I had a chance in Hades. I filled that out and submitted it. A couple months later, it was Chuck Reaver, who was director of investigations at the time called me on a Sunday morning and asked me if I would accept that position, I almost forgot I filled it out. I mean, I honestly had no confidence whatsoever I was going to get this position. But it was a way to put my name in the arena and, and start breaking out of just, you know, the FI local status. I picked up the phone. He was surprised. And he said, you know, excuse me for a moment, Chase, because I guess the one thing we didn't realize from your uh, resume was that you were a woman. And I'm very proud of that because with the name <laughs> Chase Pledsky, they had, and, and I have oh, to be honest. Man. Oh, right, oh, I, I, I'm sure you just let that one go right on by. Right? <laughs> I, I oh, was really surprise, proud. surprise. Here I am. <laughs> you know, he said, Smack. Let me tell you what he said. He said, even better. I was very proud of that because I got that position fair and square. Um, it wasn't that they needed a woman to fill a leadership position. It was based solely on my skill set. Very, very proud of that, actually. Maybe there's hope for MUFON. Right? Since I've been back after a little break, you know, I've experienced, honestly and sincerely, nothing but respect and favor, truthfully. I'm, I'm very happy to be back. Wow, that's great to hear. Because your experience uh, has not been shared with, with everybody, uh, including... Um, some individuals that have contacted me over the years that, that uh, have felt that women weren't taken as seriously within the organization as they should be. And it's it's really gratifying to hear that, uh, that at least in, on some level, and in your case, that wasn't the case. That's actually a good thing. Yeah, it really wasn't the case. And, you know, like I said, most of my experience was at an FI level. So I had zero accessibility. I, I don't think I ever once called headquarters. Never. It was really when I became star team manager, you know, that I got thrusted into a headquarters or, or a leadership position. Truthfully, I loved my job. I, I thought it was the greatest job. Um, the only problems I had to move on were with women. And that was at the time, the director of investigation was Marie Malzahn, if you guys remember, there was a small period of time, about 45 days, that nine women in leadership positions were fired from MUFON. Then, of course, I left shortly after that. And it was it all surrounded the director of investigations at that time. Well, you bring up a, a very interesting episode that um, I never really did fully get to the kind of the foundational core of this this whole controversy but why don't you give us a just a, a quick thumbnail sketch uh, and then we'll get uh, Kathleen and and Erica's take on this particular episode but how would I encapsulate this almost a uh, a breakaway movement within MUFON um, uh, there were a lot of ladies involved in this if if I remember correctly Elaine Douglas of course uh, was one of the the lead uh, people Lynn Simpson uh, there were a number but why don't you give us a, a sense of, of what the incident was about and, and what this movement was about and how it started? Uh, basically, you know, as star team manager, uh, we would get these alerts when we get category three or, you know, cases that we should deploy. And a really great case had come into the state of Washington and I was alert, alerted right away. Well, there was 
a suspicion that some of the star team cases were being, you know, they were sabotaged almost because other investigators from other groups were getting there beforehand and we didn't understand. And, um, you know, but anyway, so we get this case and out of the blue, I get a call from um, one of the men in MUFON who is very upset because the GPS coordinates are off the case. And I explained to him that, yes, that this is something we're going to be doing until the star team investigators can be on scene, um, secure, you know, evidence and the witness. And then all that information goes right back in. In fact, I'm not even the one that personally removes it. And, you know, he just started screaming at me, <laughs> screaming, I give, give me those GPS coordinates. Well, you know, it, it was a brutal phone call, very bully. And, um, of course, I reported it immediately to the DOI. And it was really the lack of inaction and, you know, betrayal, basically, of MUFON policy, uh, the betrayal of rules and regulations and a program that had been approved by the board of directors by this woman, you know, in this leadership position, which is why I left. I didn't leave because, you know, some, you know, old guy yelled at me on the phone. It was the way the process of this situation was handled and it, it couldn't have been um, more in my face. And this was at the same time that, you know, a lot of these women were being fired. And I am talking about Elaine Douglas and Marilyn Carlson and, you know, Christine Dickey and um, they're, they're Leslie Varnicle. I, I, there's a whole bunch of them, but there were like nine. Well, yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves, though, Chase. We need to talk about why. They even kind of went to the mat to begin with. We have Erica, Chase, and Kathleen with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Neighbors. I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top-flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. You've heard the phrase, you are what you eat? Not true. Actually, you are what you can absorb. So if the vitamins and supplements you now take are not being absorbed, what good are they? Introducing Protovite, proprietary liquid system that allows premium quality nutrients to positively affect the blood in an astonishing five minutes. Watch our amazing two-minute live blood cell video at TrueHealthFacts.com. That's TrueHealthFacts.com. Then call 502-410-3411. Protovite is nutrition you can feel. Protovite is nutrition that gets in. We use cell phones against our heads every day. But now, a landmark U.S. government study confirms increased health risks from exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The time to protect yourself is now. The solution is Defender Shield. Proudly made in the USA, Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation emitted from cell phones, tablets, and laptops. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. Use discount code DEFENDER for 10% off. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in EMF radiation protection. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. 
This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. Now there's finally a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. You can even add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try Transcend absolutely risk-free for 10 days. So call now, 1-800-962-2358. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light, you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. To receive your 10-day in-home trial, call minicpap.com now. 1-800-962-2358. Again, that's 1-800-962-2358. A lot can happen in six seconds. A rodeo ride, a dramatic basketball win, and the world record holder can solve a Rubik's Cube. Six seconds is how long it takes for an 18-wheeler traveling at a safe speed to come to a complete stop. And in those six seconds, that truck will travel the length of two football fields. So please, give them room. Never cut in front of a large truck for any reason. Our roads, our responsibility. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We're doing the Women's Roundtable on the Paracast with Erica, Chase, and Chris, and Jean, and Kathleen. We've got five people here vying for attention. No, that's just me. Because I feel ignored. I'm kidding. Chris? We're talking about accountability issues uh, in terms of MUFON, uh, the relationship with Bigelow and Bigelow Aerospace, uh, the actual um, flow of of cases, where they went, who got them, uh, what decision-making process uh, ensued, whether some cases were actually squirreled away by Bigelow. Um, and 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 MUFON was totally taken out of the equation because of Bigelow's financial relationship with MUFON. You're skipping over a lot of stuff, Chase. Well, it's because it's a time frame, and I thought you wanted to, you know, hear about why I left. And as far as most of that goes, that was things that we were looking into at the time, and uh, state directors were calling us, inquiring about some of this information. But I had left. I quit. So I wasn't part of the solution. That, of course, ensued after. And part of that was, you know, Marie being dismissed as well. So a lot of those answers I don't have for you, Chris. What I can tell you is um, completely ignored, you know, anything I had to say. I was completely betrayed by um, this woman turning around and giving this guy a GPS coordinate who wasn't even close to the state. He wasn't going to help with the case. He never said, hey, is there something I can do? You know, why did he need that GPS coordinate? And it was Marie Malzahn that said, because Bigelow can move his satellites. And I was horrified by that comment (laughs) because as somebody (laughs) but as somebody that had been a MUFON for 18 years, I knew this was a rogue, uh, a rogue betrayal. This was not how MUFON operated. You know, I had been in for 18 years. You know, I've never seen anything like it. So I, to this day, maintain that, you know, there was just a couple of people that had different agendas in MUFON at the time. But MUFON is still a, a very credible, respectable entity out there that's still one of the few groups still, you know, thriving since 1969. And first of all, just to clarify, you're still with MUFON now? I left for four years, and it was actually uh, at a conference in Laughlin that Jan Harzan approached me and asked if we could go to lunch. And I had absolutely no intentions of ever going back to MUFON. And to be quite honest with you, I was not going to like Jan Harzan, and I certainly wasn't going to respect him, let alone trust him. And I went to lunch, and I'm a tough old cookie. By the end of this, I was considering taking a position that he had offered with a special assignment team that we only report to uh, him, the DOI 
now, which is Steve Hudgens and the board of directors. So I did finally go back, but this was months and months, guys. This was like four months later. I finally said, okay, I'll come back. It was a lot of um, working out some issues and things um, that really come, it came down to, for me personally, uh, Marie Malzahn. Now, I, I want to be very clear about one thing. In those 18 years, I never had a single problem in Buffon, and I haven't since. It was that one huge time that everything just just came at me at one. It, it just all culminated in one place. And it was very clear that this woman in this leadership position, for some reason, was getting rid of women who were strong and strong minded and um, experienced. And we were crumbling one after another. That sounds wacky. Erica, your experience at MUFON wasn't super pleasant. What do you have to say about it? It wasn't. And I think that I've I've met a lot of wonderful people who I will always be friends with and always support. And there are a lot of good people that are state directors and field investigators involved with MUFON. Do I think that MUFON needs to seriously look at their professional standards and ethics and the way they enforce them, I do. Do I think that they need to take a good look at people who are representing MUFON, who are uh, abusive and bully, have that bully mentality? Absolutely. I mean, as a woman, as a state director, as somebody who was volunteering 30 plus hours a week in an organization and making some good headway, I mean, I most definitely experienced things that I wouldn't wish on another woman in the field. And so, you know, I mean, that's why I've been kind of taking a, a role where I want to talk out about this because it's happening. And, and for whatever reason, MUFON have headquarters kind of chose to turn a blind eye to what was happening or, or whatever, you know, but yeah, I mean, I it was, it wasn't pleasant. And I, like I said, I wish all of my friends who are intelligent brilliant people who deserve to be supported and respected. I wish them the best. And for me, leaving MUFON has been a very positive uh, experience. Now, would you be specific about a few of the things that kind of really upset you here? Because that would set the stage for our two other guests to respond. You know, I think that in, and I've been, I've talked to Kathleen about this. She's been supportive as a woman and a, a, respectable person in the field. Um, there were just a series of events that happened and I was, I went in and took on not only trying to regroup a a chapter that was in complete disarray because Elaine Douglas had passed away and people here in Utah were very, very leery of MUFON. They didn't want anything to do with it, including Marlee Spenlove, who was also assistant state director for MUFON. And so I had to try to, to, to rally the troops to get people engaged again. And then I also worked directly under Jan Harzan, and I would send out the monthly statistical email blasts as well as the e-journal blasts. And I was attempting to work with headquarters on marketing because I, being in business, having a successful small business for the past 20 years, you know, they're things that I know and and can bring to the table. I was trying to help headquarters kind of move in a, in a fresh approach where we're engaging a younger generation. And then I also did a lot of stuff behind the scenes for the communications department with regard to my to hangar one and so i i purchased software got the episodes uh before they were aired and interviewed and edited those interviews for publicity for mufon headquarters as well as many other things um and luckily i still have all of those emails back and forth between roger and jan and myself so i know uh what i did and it became evident towards the end that there were a couple people involved in MUFON that were uh, didn't have the same mindset. And there were a series of things that happened towards the end, which I won't go into in too much detail because I already discussed them on Lorraine Fenton's show. But it was it was a situation that was severe enough that I resigned and my assistant state director also resigned. And now we have a situation where we don't have a, a Utah 
chapter, an effective Utah chapter anymore, which is unfortunate because there's so many great things that are taking place in Utah. And it's, it's, I hope that at some point in time, Utah will be represented with a good, strong chapter here. Kathleen. Yes. What's your response to some of this? Well, I, I have to say, first of all, that I have been a MUFON member since 1991. Uh, for 10 years, I was MUFON's director of field investigator training. Uh, I am a person who does not become personally involved in the struggles. Uh, I am a very serious researcher, and I am highly focused upon the work that I am doing to move ahead to accomplish things, and I don't want to waste my time on uh, internal struggles. That said, when internal struggles have occurred, I have simply stepped away and uh, have not been involved in those. I don't like politics in organizations. I realize that there are some dysfunctional people in MUFON. Uh, there are dysfunctional people everywhere in organizations, in families, uh, in the general public. And it is something that uh, has caused some people to uh, be harmed, to be hurt uh, through malicious gossip which is, I think, part of what has happened to Erica. And uh, it is unfortunate. Uh, I'm currently MUFON's director of Experiencer Research, have been for about six years now, I think. Let's pick up on this in the next segment with Kathleen and Erica and Chase and Jean and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Glad to see that Chris's voice is almost all the way there after what he suffered. <laughs> Good that you're getting back here. 
we have Erica and Chase and Kathleen. Kathleen, you want to continue on that thread that you were mentioning in the previous segment, or let's move on? But I should say some positive things about MUFON, too, because I, I really think that Jan Harzan has been a very strong and positive leader. Well, the thing that I think bothers me and Chris might as well is now we're seeing speakers go to MUFON events that are at the very least controversial and at worst may denigrate from sending a image of scientific UFO research, if you get my point. I need to explain that. Yeah, you can't blame that all on not, Jan. Jan didn't select those people. Let me explain the the rules of the states in selecting speakers at the conference. Sure, go ahead. Okay. The state director in any state that hosts the MUFON conference currently has the right to select the uh, the theme of the conference and the speakers at that conference. Uh, some people are not, I, I suppose, familiar enough with some of these so-called researchers in the field to know that some of them are well-known frauds and uh, have asked these individuals to speak at conferences not being aware of the facts but shouldn't there be vetting of that if an individual state director sets this up okay that's the point shouldn't there be vetting? i agree yes i agree with that and i think that mufon and the board of directors are taking a look at that and now realize that there is a problem with this and will vet speakers from now on well, you know, I, I've got to jump in here, uh, having a personal experience to relate. Um, the reverse is also true. There's also, um, in the case of, of my particular example, in, in 1997, when they were starting to um, to talk about the 1998 uh, MUFON International Symposium, which was going to be in, in Denver, a number of the higher-ups, uh, the state director and, and uh, quite a number of state section directors, were really uh, very, very interested in the work that I had been doing the past three or four years. And the amount of activity that we were experiencing down in the San Luis Valley was just breathtaking. And because I wasn't a member of MUFON, the higher-ups at MUFON, and I will <laughs> name one person, I don't want to speak of the dead in a disparaging manner, but Walt Andrus said he is not speaking at our conference. And so, you know, the weeks went by, the months went by, and, and this was all going on without me even knowing about it. And then finally, what happened was that they uh, there was a, a, a revolt uh, within Colorado MUFON. And they said, if he doesn't speak, we are not going to host this event because <laughs> uh, which uh, there's not many people know about this. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so, you, you know, the, it went back and forth and it was, you know, it was like a, a Mexican standoff. And then finally, Andrew said, OK, he can be the first speaker at eight o'clock in the morning on Thursday. <laughs> and so that's when I spoke. And I'll tell you, they had me in, in you know, a little room that could maybe seat 50 people. It, it was packed oh, <laughs> and then great. overflowing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, of course, the whole conference went on. There were a lot of great speakers. I, <laughs> Tracy Torme and I had a great time. I actually uh, got to dog Phil class with his walker, which I will always fondly remember. But, <laughs> but that gives you an example of the exact opposite. When the, the state knows better than the international uh, leadership what, what's going on in their state, and, and they have a sense of, you know, who should be addressing uh, the conference to bring people up to speed on an amazing wave of activity in, in, in you know, looking at, at this particular instance. So, I mean, it, it works both ways. It, it apparently does. And, you know, I wasn't aware of that scenario, but, you know, maybe that is uh, why the more power was given to the state uh, f- for that purpose. Well, the bottom line is, if you're not a rank and file member of MUFON, uh, you're you are not going to have your work featured at a MUFON symposium, which I've 
you know, the past 20 years. I mean, I've never gotten an invitation to speak at MUFON, uh, even though I feel I do good work and a lot of people could benefit by that. I'm inspirational. I, I look at things from out of the box. Uh, I, I, I attempt to bring creative thinking. And I'm just speaking for not only myself, but for a bunch of investigators and researchers out there who are not given the kind of exposure to their work uh, that would then inspire others uh, to help them in their particular locale. And, uh, you know, this is a real kind of a, we're getting off topic here. I, I, I feel the same is true uh, in, uh, about women interested in the field, but even doubly, triply, uh, quadruply so. Uh, being a woman, trying, to, trying to, to break into this whole field now is different than it was 18 years ago, 20 years ago, when Chase uh, first started getting involved, or, or you know, a decade and a half ago when when Erica started getting involved, and, and yourself, uh, Kathleen, uh, when you got involved, it's more difficult, I think, now. And I, I'm opening this up <laughs> for discussion, but for young women wanting to get involved in this field, they will say, "Well, you know, forget UFOs. I'm going into to haunt haunting." Uh, uh, research, uh, or I'm going into, uh, uh, you know, any one of a number of, of of disciplines that you can go into and 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 become an investigator and a researcher. Ufology is becoming an ivy tower men's men's thing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. I honestly well, just don't see it that way, and uh, you know, it's just me. But I will. I do want to say one thing. Like Kathleen, that drama I had back in 2011 with MUFON, you know, I, I just quit. I went on my own way. I did very well on my own. I was very happy. You know, Chris, you, you, we've been friends for a long time out here. And, um, but I didn't join uh, Elaine Douglas and her reform move, MUFON movement because, like Kathleen, I step away from drama. I want nothing to do with, you know, the gossip part. I'm just very uncomfortable with all the confrontation and ugliness and literally work. That's exactly what I do as well. So um, I find myself out of the loop on some of this stuff very often, unfortunately. Right. But I think, though, that I just have to throw this in there. I think that, I mean, we know that there is gossip and ugliness and that there are people that we're associated with that are, are not being incredibly nice or supportive in, in the public sense. And to me, when people are being attacked that are simply trying to do the best they can do, I think that we have an obligation, especially when somebody's younger in the field, to stand up and to support them and to get involved and to call out bad behavior. And I think that if we keep turning away from that, then then things are never going to change and be productive for younger people in the field. And I disagree with the statement that it is more difficult than ever for women to become involved in this field. Uh, there are that. many women involved in the Mutual UFO Network. There are many women involved in important roles in uh, as state directors or state assistant directors and also at headquarters in, Newton, in, in MUFON and holding national roles as well. Uh, any young woman who wants to become involved as a researcher has to go in and has to learn the field and has to work their way up. You don't start at the top, and people need to realize that. You have to have knowledge to be respected, and you right. have to have accurate knowledge. You have to be a good researcher, a good investigator. You have to be intelligent, and these, all of these things are very important and I think women are moving ahead. I see more women speaking now at conferences than I used to see when I first began speaking. Let me just say something because we have to break in a moment here. In the International UFO Conference, out of 20 speakers, three were women. More to come with Jean, Chris, Chase, Kathleen, and Erica. You're in the Paracast. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. 
But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Lifetime Gray's 100% grass-fed beef has the health benefits you seek. When compared to conventional beef, it offers good fats while virtually eliminating the bad. That's the result of cattle who never eat grain, ever. Rich in antioxidants, including vitamin E, C, beta-carotene, and CLA. No artificial hormones, antibiotics, or other drugs. For all our fresh, non-cooked products with only 100% grass-fed beef, go to MidasResources.com. Use voucher code GCN to get 30% off your order. MidasResources.com or find us on Facebook. Back pain doesn't take vacations. It never celebrates holidays. It's on the job 24-7 to keep your life exactly where it is, in limbo. But it doesn't have to be that way because Laser Spine Institute can help you take back your life from chronic neck and back pain. With a less than one-inch incision, our minimally invasive procedures have provided relief to over 60,000 patients with a 97% patient satisfaction rate. So get ready to stand tall and live the life you've imagined for yourself without pain. Are you or a loved one suffering from a bulging disc? herniated disc, spinal stenosis, pinched nerve, or degenerative disc disease? Call our spine care consultants now at 855-519-BACK. For a no-cost MRI review and to learn more, it's time to say goodbye to chronic neck and back pain. Call 855-519-BACK now to see if laser spine surgery is right for you. That's 855-519-BACK. What have you got to lose? Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. Hi, I am Kelly Cook, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Kmart. Did you know that premature birth is the number one killer of babies in the United States or that survivors can face a lifetime of serious health problems? Guess what? You can help. Join me and Kmart for the March for Babies Walk. We'll work together to raise funds for research and programs that help the March of Dimes fight premature birth and birth defects and improve the health of moms and babies. So start your team today at marchforbabies.org. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Let me tell our listeners we have a second radio show we'd like you to hear. It's called After the Paracast, and it's a mixture. It includes color commentary, general chit-chat, special guest interviews, and I think a lot of people don't realize that it's not just me and Chris or another co-host. It is special guest interviews, too. And the only way to hear it is to become a member of the Paracast Plus. To find more, go to plus, P-L-U-S dot theparacast dot com, plus dot theparacast dot com. We offer also a commercial-free version of this show as part of the package and other benefits. Check it out. Prices start just $1.49 a week. We have Kathleen and Chris and Jean and Chase and Erica. 
I'm not a proponent of of everything's got to be 50 percent women, 50 percent men. I think uh, obviously that abilities, uh, uh, past experience and, and, and stuff obviously have to be factored in. But looking at the list of state directors and looking at the board, there is about a three or four to one almost of of uh, men to women. And, you know, whether this is all based on merit or not, or whether it's based on, on some ob- obscure formula that we don't we're not privy to. Um, there does seem to be a predominance of males at the top of leadership positions in MUFON, uh, it, just like there is uh, in in our culture at large. I mean, it doesn't matter the industry or the you know the business type that you're looking at. You're going to find that men are, are pretty much running things. And uh, with yeah, I don't want to say token women involved because I think maybe back in the 70s and early 80s we could say token women. Now it's different. I think there is upward mobility, and women are being acknowledged for their experience, for their savvy, for their abilities equally with men. We still have a long way to go, Kathleen. We do, and it takes time, but we are moving forward, and that's what is important. You can't expect a huge change overnight, but I am seeing changes, uh, and we are moving forward, and, and I'm older than the other people here. I grew up in a society where women had very few rights and was part of the women's struggle for equal rights, for equal pay, for jobs. And I feel that we have come a long way uh, in the UFO field. And others might disagree, but... No, I absolutely agree. And I see that constantly. And again, I bring up the fact that, you know, my star team manager application, I guess it didn't occur to me to put down I was female. It's one of the things I left off the sheet, but they absolutely gave me everything I needed to succeed, except that direct boss, (laughs) which was changed after I became manager. You know, what I find is that if you want to be that, or if you want that, be that. If you want respect, you know, we respect each other. If you want a close group of people, you need to operate very well in that group. If you don't mind calling people out, like remember Elaine Douglas, I mean, she'd get out there and, you know, get on radio shows and call out, you know, names and things like that. And then there's a response. I just think that sometimes out here that People don't want to wait. Just like Kathleen was saying, you have to be in the group for a while because so many come and go. I think you need to work. That should be the ultimate litmus test. What have you done lately? But (laughs) what what is this about being, I mean, we have to to wait and then earn respect and go through all these rungs. I mean, if, if somebody is new in this field and they have good, fresh ideas and they're willing to get out there and work, they should be supported and they shouldn't have to wait in not line what I said. to be able to talk to, to others. Not what I said at all. Um, what I'm saying is that when you're new coming in, you know, you work your way. There is a part of being here. Erica, you've been around long enough to know that sometimes new people don't stick around. And so are you going to make them, you know, presidents and star team managers if you don't know what they're capable of? What are their leadership skills? What do they like under pressure? Are they the first ones to turn around and start digging up dirt on people and throwing it out there? You know, we really need to focus on the core of, you know, who we're working with. And it really comes down to ethics. Personally, I think when you work hard, Erica, we've even talked privately on a telephone call. And I believe I said then that the our merits as women is going to have to come from work. What are we doing out here? Because I don't really associate myself as a female ufologist or a woman in ufology. Guys, I'm a UFO investigator and I'll stand in any arena with my skill sets and work hard. I mean, we all will. <laughs> yes. But some of us have, you know, been through a little different uh, set of circumstances where unfortunately being a woman, people say, very slanderous things because you're a woman. I mean, I wish that I could say that I I could stand here and say, hey, everything's great and I'm just going to act like a man. And I mean, I'm just one of these people that's here and people are just looking at me for my work. I know I do good work. I know I will continue to do good work. And I know that I've been through things and I've also talked to many other women in the field that have been through things that people shouldn't have to go through. And unless we're willing to, to work together and to support each other as women, change 
changes are not going to be made. And we really need to effectively look at what's happening with the phenomenon and get some answers. You know, we can't afford to wait around for another 30 years while slow changes are made. We need to make some pretty effective changes. Well, I guess I'm just not aware of any big problems going on because it's pretty smooth sailing where I'm sitting. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, Erica. I honestly, I'm not hearing from other women any problems. Some women have been targeted by some very narrow-minded men uh, for one reason or another. I have to say that when I took over as director of experience or research, there was a small group of men who appeared to be very angry about the fact that I was actually doing something, that I was working with a team to develop protocols for abduction investigations, that that we were moving forward on this instead of ignoring it. There were individuals who seemed very angry and one who actually attempted to have me thrown out. Fortunately, I had kept all the communication, very little communication. It was all respectful on my part toward this man. He was very nasty toward me. And when it came down to it, I was exonerated because I had not done anything wrong. It was this individual who had. I had to prove myself, but that was only one point in time that I've had difficulty. uh, And I think that's how we win, Kathleen. You know, it's the same thing with my experience. You know, I had trouble I handled it as the best way I knew how. I stood up and told the truth. I went very public with exactly what happened. I told the truth then. I just stayed busy and working and, you know, eventually was an invited back. But not everybody's happy. I guess I just don't seem to have a lot of that in my court. And I don't mean to be disrespectful. If anyone has ever called me, Erica, you and I have talked in the past. I thought I gave good advice. I thought I, I helped. I tried anyway. But um, I just don't have a lot of things that I could point out that are horrible. I just don't. And if I did, I I probably wouldn't work here. We have Jean and Chris, Erica, Chase, and Kathleen. You're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with Principal Office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip-flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented MyPillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. MyPillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed. It's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. Hi, this is Ron Paul. I am a former congressman, physician, and presidential candidate. 
The world is in turmoil. Things like Ebola, earthquakes, wars, and famines are commonplace. As Americans, we are largely sheltered from these events. However, in parts of the world, just having enough food is a huge problem. For some of us, there is the nagging thought that we may not always have it so good. So we keep some food on hand just in case. My family and I have found a product that helps us do this better. It's a home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With it, we eat healthier and store a little more food. We freeze dry everything we love to eat, and it lasts up to 25 years. Who knows what the future will bring? One thing's certain, my family and I will always have food on the table. To learn more, go to HarvestRight.com or call 800-763-5999. That's HarvestRight.com or 800-763-5999. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications Applications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IVC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injuryhelpdesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from presidentialufo.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. With Gene and Chris and the Paracast, Women's Roundtable, Kathleen Martin, Erica Lukes, Chase Kotsky. We're going to continue with Chris. Go ahead. We're all after the same thing. We're after uh, understanding. We're after definitions, even. Uh, if you really want to start at the, at the you know, the basic root of, of what we're aspiring to here, we're aspiring to knowledge and understanding and awareness and clarity when it comes to these things. And so we do have that underpinnings of a universal kind of a, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, that's what we're shooting for. And and what I'm hearing here is is that we're not necessarily dealing with gender issues with people uh, having problems uh, because of they're a man or a woman, in this case a woman, but it's more sort of uh, personal differences that it doesn't matter who you are. If somebody disagrees with you, they're not going to you know, be your, your ally or your friend. I, I do see something a little bit more deeper and, 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 and more systemic uh, than that, you guys. I, I really do. You know, I've been in, I haven't been in this field for that long, not like Gene, which you know, was like 40-plus <laughs> years. I've only been in this field almost 25 years. But over that time period, you know, I've worked with quite a number of women, uh, female investigators. Um, I could name them all off <laughs> if you'd like. You know, I've been consistently hearing that they don't feel that their work is taken as seriously uh, as men's work. And I think that is a, a kind of the elephant in the room here, let's face it, is Linda Moulton Howe. When I first was trained by Linda to interview people back in ninety, <laughs> early 94, like God, God bless her, she, she really... You know, and I'll always be forever in her debt. She is a very good uh, interviewer, uh, one of the best I've, I've ever known, uh, and I mean that sincerely. Uh, she w- would tell me that you know, you know, Chris, it doesn't matter, you know, what people think about me. You know, I'm on a mission here. I want to know what's going on. I want the truth, and I always, and still to this day, I admire uh, for that aspect of her work. And one of the things that she did say early on was that she was really sick and tired of people not taking her seriously. You know, I think her career, if you want to call it that, anyone with a career in ufology is suspect in my book. But Linda has a career uh, in ufology. And I I would think that, uh, you know, looking at that career that dispassionately, um, that um, she's actually succeeded in being taken seriously. Unfortunately, (laughs) whether that 
uh, is accurate or not, uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, Chase and Kathleen are saying that uh, there's really nothing to uh, any sort of gender e- inequality uh, no, no, out no, there. No, I absolutely identify that you know women are not the, you know, our work isn't given the same precedence as men, and that we do have a long way to go. Um, I, I'm here saying that I just not subject to a lot of, you know, that discrimination. You know, it, it's not. I don't know how to fix that other than be grateful um, that you know I have not been victim to you know some of this you know mistreatment. Because that's just not my experience, and I can't well, make it. I so it's I'm not, not trying really to act like a man. You know that's ridiculous. I mean, I love being a girl. Obviously, I just work. You know, I'll stand on my own merits. And you know, as far as helping other women in the field, I'm very close to women and have been since day one. Um, no. I guess I just didn't see that. You know, there was this big group out here because when I saw like Elaine Douglas break away. To me, it was just angry. I don't want to be part of anger, you know, and I think anybody who knew Elaine Douglas probably saw most of that being her motive with this reform MUFON group. You know, I didn't join it. You know, I stood up and and did my own thing again and was doing quite well. You know, if, if things come across my table, I absolutely deal with it, but I just don't have the experiences where, you know, I've been disrespected or have been belittled and shoved in a corner. I I just don't have it. I think that for me, I have been very fortunate to be closely associated with Stanton Friedman. Uh, I'm a strong woman. He's a strong man. And we found that we worked well together. We've written three books together. We do research together on a regular basis, work together on a regular basis. And he was highly respected before I was even known. He does have a great deal of respect for me and for the work I do. But one thing that I have noticed is that even though I was the major author on two of our books, meaning I wrote more than 50 percent, he in the field has generally been given credit as the primary author and researcher and me as his assistant. And he has worked very hard to make it clear that I am not his assistant any more than he is mine, that we are equal in the work that we do. Kathleen, I just have to say that you've always, I mean, you and I have had many conversations about this and about moving forward and finding good relationships and having a strong core and and you out of any woman in the field has been so incredibly supportive to me and you've really been an inspiration to me as far as you know how do I handle my career how do I roll through this lower level political nonsense and do all of that and so I mean I I think it's it's really important to stress that there are good women out there like you that want to mentor younger women coming into this and I know I've appreciated that well, I, I was happy to help, and I'm I'm happy to help any woman who comes to me and asks how to do this. Uh, what do you do? And so I think that that is is very important. Thank you for saying that, Erica. That's true, I and I mean it. it. I really have always thought that and you've been such a light spot as far as this and 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 kind of moving through this because you know, unfortunately, when you get started in this or you try to to come out in a public way, you know, you're, you, you're subject to attacks that you're not necessarily wouldn't be if you were, you know, working at home on your business or in a different way, you know, and so I, it's, it's important to find support. You're one of those people. I think there are other great women out there that are doing work and we need to support them any way we can. And, and I, I feel like you said that good positive things are happening and hopefully, through time and getting that younger generation involved, we'll see some of this kind of old school, good old boys stuff fade away and we can get some new research done. I hope so. And I think that we're we're moving toward that as women in our society in general take a leadership role more and more frequently than we did in the past. Yeah, well, it's it's happening. It's like that uh, trying to uh, watch the minute hand on a clock 
It's like a minute hand on a clock. You can look at it all you want, but you're not going to see it move, even though you know that it's moving fairly fairly quickly. Or um, the term glacial, <laughs> I think, is uh, <sighs> appropriate. I think we're seeing changes within the culture generally and then within ufology and the paranormal realm um i think i think it's more accurate that you're, you're seeing glacial changes uh you know it takes it takes a composite sort of you know a many years of of looking at it to really <laughs> notice any change but i'm glad we've got two out of three women who are on our panel are saying hey don't worry about it we haven't had any problems uh, maybe there are problems, but uh, you know we're we're moving forward. We're doing we're doing good. You know, let's not rock the boat. We might shake ourselves out into the cold Arctic <laughs> waters. Uh, you know, again, I I must say, many of the women that I've worked with over the years are dead, um, and I I really hate to say that. Leah Haley, uh, Ellen Crystal, uh, God rest her crazy soul. <laughs> Carl I remember Turner. Ellen Crystal years ago. I think I met her once near her home in New Jersey, and that was the week of a Star Trek convention. So that would take it, oh, hmm, probably to the early 1970s or thereabouts. Very, very interesting times for lots of reasons. We got more to come with Gene, Chris, Chase, Erica, Kathleen. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top-flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that. www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. You've been hearing Dr. Wallach talking about 90 essential nutrients, keeping the body healthy. GCNteam.com now has Beyond Tangy Tangerine Tablets, 60 plant-derived minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, packed in a powerful tablet. But that's not it. 160,000 auric points, a knockout punch to free radicals. Call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. That's 877-878-4203. Have you ever wanted a shortcut to getting the underground secrets to making money online and seriously grow your business? Whether it's a new business, a part-time income, or an existing business, you have this incredible limited offer to get a copy of this Amazon best-selling book on dot-com success for free. Uncover the success factors to make your business ignite. Go to secretsignite.com. That's secretsignite.com. Get your free copy now. Go to secretsignite.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow 
allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-615-7709. That's 800-615-7709. 800-615-7709. Are you looking to become more self-sufficient? Then you need to have your own energy source. The Solark EMP hardened generator is automatic, maintenance-free, and reduces your monthly electric bill. You can also take it off-grid when you go camping. Contact PortableSolarLLC.com or call for details at 972-575-8875 today. Portable Solar LLC gives you everything you need to start using solar energy in less than one hour. Solark EMP hardened solar generator energy insurance. For your family or business, call Portable Solar LLC today. Tom Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Chris sounded mad there because I actually asked him to repeat the Paracast. We've we've had some typical Skype problems because Skype problems are typical. What are you going to do about it? Chris, we also, in our final five segments, have a few questions from listeners. If you think there's something relevant to the issues being discussed by Erica, Kathleen, and Chase, please don't hesitate. Okay. I won't hesitate. Most of it's pretty specific to uh, Kathleen's, actually, uh, research and investigative work. There's one thing that we've kind of already covered uh, in terms of negative treatment, uh, simply because you're a woman in a male-dominated field, we've we've already covered that ground. But uh, I originally envisioned this whole idea of a woman's roundtable and and bringing this subject and and putting it front and center is not only you know a way to complain or or like a bitch session. Well, this happened and this happened and this happened. But you know, I really wanted to look at this as a way to move forward and to come up with some ideas of how to attract more women into the field. And the reason why I say this is very simple. I feel women in many cases, not all, but many cases actually are more effective out in the field doing actual boots on the ground or pumps on the ground, if you will. You know, I'm trying to stay away from male cliches here. But I I find that women actually are better suited, have a better bedside manner, as I like to to call it, around experiencers who are very vulnerable, who feel uh, in some cases violated, in other cases uh, singled out. I think women are better equipped, I think, just in terms of of their emotional qualities, uh, better equipped to allow experiencers and and, uh, witnesses uh, to feel comfortable enough to open up and really uh, describe their experience. Now, this doesn't hold true in totality across uh, across the field. I think there are some cases that uh, it doesn't matter who it is. You're going to get the Jack Webb dates, times, facts, uh, just the facts, ma'am. But it's the cases that have the nuances uh, of possibly – you know, something unsettling, things that, that make one feel emotionally vulnerable. I think women are better at getting people to feel comfortable enough to open up. Now, I say this because I was involved in a very intense case, one of the most intense cases I've ever been called in on. I just happened to be with Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Uh, we went up and we, we investigated three cases up where I used to live in the San Luis Valley. I was so amazed at her effortless ability to get people who normally, to me, probably wouldn't have opened up, period, let alone to the extent they did with her. And I just sat back and took notes, and I I felt like I was in investigative school. And this is coming from someone that had already been in the field, you know, almost 20 years and had investigated (laughs) hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases and, you know, interviewed thousands of people. So just based on that single experience, I really feel that the women are an untapped resource for the field. I really feel that. I'm glad that you guys are kind of slowly proving me wrong here. But, you know, what can I say? I mean, that's my own personal experience. And like I said, I've worked with women all through my my 
25 years of doing this. And, you know, Rosemary, Gail Stalin in her own way. I, I mentioned Linda Howe, obviously, uh, already. There's others. Uh, Nancy Talbot, I think, uh, in some ways uh, has some real <laughs> interesting uh, approaches uh, to the subject matter that I think are, are her own. Her, her and own Debbie sort of Ziegelmeier? Who, you know, uh, Debbie, Debbie uh, I haven't um, worked with Debbie. She's very, very uh, good. Uh, she's, I mean, come on. She's on the board of directors of MUFON, one of two women, I think, out of seven or eight board members. Yeah, Debbie's good. Uh, Phyllis you know, Ludinger. Well, yes, Phyllis, Phyllis, yeah. Ludinger. I mean, she's, you couldn't really call her an investigator, but in terms of, no, a, of a, researcher, a researcher, absolutely. She's one of the very few, period, male or female, that have even, you know, had the courage to touch the subject. I, I was so happy when she agreed to do the Paracast because she rarely does uh, any any radio or media. So what I'm hearing here, basically, let me sum all this up. I've been monopolizing the conversation too long here. But what I'm what I'm hearing is, you know, they're maybe not as big of a problem as you think, that, that things are progressing. And it's all more of interpersonal relationships as opposed to gender relationships or gen, gender issues. So let's take it to the next level here. What can we do to help attract more talented women investigators and researchers to the field? Or do we even have to? I think that, like you said, it's imperative to attract women researchers to the field because we have a much different way of dealing with and looking at uh, different cases and dealing with people. I mean, I think we can look at things in a much broader sense, which is what we're going to need to do if we want to make true breakthroughs in this field instead of that kind of nuts and bolts, very narrow-minded approach to research, which we have seen that hasn't necessarily worked over the past 50 years. And, you know, it's vital that we make a difference, that we also really talk about ethics and professional standards. And as researchers, that we abide by those and support people that are coming into the field. And and I believe that we have to talk about issues and, and address them. And I think that that will help a great deal. I agree with Erica. I think that women tend to be more compassionate and more empathetic than men in the way that we are wired. Going back many, many years, if you look at the very old cases of alien abduction, when there were women present who were part of the people who were abducted, it was always vital to have a woman there who would make those women feel more comfortable. So we have a very long history of having women involved with women who have been abducted. And I think that it's very important for women to be nuts and bolts investigators, too. We had There are many things. Denise Stoner, who is my co-author on the Alien Abduction Files, is a top-notch, nuts-and-bolts type researcher. She has all the gadgets. She measures everything. I go out on investigations with her, and I have never been more impressed by anyone's methodology than I have been by Denise's, and she has been an investigator for quite a long time. Agree with Kathleen. It's it's a combination of intelligence and dignity and the ethical fibers that we project everywhere we go in these investigations. We have to stick with scientific methods because all the retelling in the world isn't convincing anyone. So looking for that admissibility and burden of proof. But women also bring that intuitive nature. I joke with my kids and tell them I can smell it coming. You know, I can feel it coming. I, I don't even have to see it with my own eyes. I can tell you exactly what's going on. Maybe it's a mom thing. I'm not sure. But absolutely. And I see women joining. We have several women who have just joined MUFON and are coming up. Um, one that I'd like to point out is Carrie McClure. You know, less than a year in MUFON, already writing articles, already being recognized, moving up very, very quickly uh, because of her skill set. Because one of the best things about MUFON, there is no tenure. So I'm watching these young women who I've known, Carrie, um, you know her as well, Kathleen, from she's Anna's mom. When oh. Anna, the little girl, came out um, at the conference at yes. Sebring. She's a wonderful woman. I We're very close. We have been working very closely for a number of years and actually do the field reports. That's our uh, research page, the two of us together. And she's remarkable. So these younger women are joining. 
again, you know, I, I think some here have me at a disadvantage because I'm seeing younger women thrive and do very well out here. Um, maybe, I don't know. I, I just it, run with a different crowd. I have no idea, guys. All I know is that it's very positive. I see good things happening. and Excellent. Maybe that's- well, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that <laughs> personally. But, Chris, you know me. Like, I have no problem standing up, telling the truth, and calling it out either. Yeah, but- no. Yeah, you're very, very upfront and and no holds barred. I, it, so is Erica. Kathleen's a little bit more measured, but I think she has to be in the kind of role that, that she finds herself in. Gene, forget about Gene. Me, I, you know, boy, uh, to a fault. <laughs> it's it's one thing that people don't like about me is that I'm too out front and I call it, call it like it is too much. You know me, Chris. I'm, I'm always measured in my Well, that's good. And you had, a, you had some what? real good teachers, I'll tell you. Um, you know, it's it's important. People, do, you know, fail to realize that when you have big organizations, uh you have politics, and when you have little, tiny, minuscule organizations like MUFON, relatively speaking, you also have politics. So, uh, you know, large groups of people tend to uh, shake out uh, in almost predictable ways, and uh, it's you know, it's the institutionalization of the field that uh, you know maybe is a problem, maybe not. Um, I, I think an issue that we haven't talked about as well is um, the role of the media. More to come with Jean, Chris, Erica, Chase, and Kathleen. You're in. Erica. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great t-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Now's the time to refresh your home and save at Lumber Liquidator's Spring Flooring Kickoff Sale. Our stores are packed with the latest spring trends like modern waterproof wood look flooring. It's up to 34% off or choose from more than 200 styles of pre-finished hardwood from $149. Get deals in over 55 varieties of bamboo from $159. More from $0.59 cents and special financing. The Spring Flooring Kickoff Sale ends Tuesday. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you today. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We continue with our Women's Roundtable with Chase, Erica, and Kathleen, and Gene and Chris are what? The ringmasters. We're just letting them do their thing. Chris? Well, before we went to break, you know, I was talking about the whole idea of, of institutionalization of, of subject matter and of gender roles and that sort of thing. We, we've discussed this a lot. But then you get into the, uh, the, the deep, dark realm of pundits and of commentators and of uh, the peanut gallery that always has something to say. 
and sometimes uh, sits in positions of power when it comes to uh, you know uh, radio programs and uh, media sort of outlets and and sources for getting the word out about 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 the work uh, to the public. We've seen quite a bit of unscrupulous activity, I, in my estimation, not only in uh, people stealing other people's work and, and putting their own name on it, sort of gross plagiarization, but also stealing their intellectual property, releasing DVDs without permission, uh, this sort of thing. And also you have certain male players uh, out there in the media when it comes to podcasts and that sort of thing that um, I think Erica described one uh, of, of probably many examples, a particular uh, individual who who plays the gender card uh, unabashedly and uh, really is, <laughs> is, is a Neanderthal. And so, you know, Kathleen, uh, Chase, Erica, let's talk about how the field is being embraced by a mainly male punditry, if you will, or, or uh, uh, critics, uh, commentators, people that uh, are behind the scenes, uh, moving and shaking uh, with uh, media outlets and that sort of thing. Have you noticed that there's a gender bias uh, in that particular realm? Boy, that's a tough question. There, there do appear to be more male commentators than female commentators, but I've been on some radio shows with some top-notch female commentators, I would say. And what is important is the quality, not the quantity in my mind. I mean, of course, it would be great to have more top-notch women commentators, but they have to make the decision that they want to do this as well. And, uh, you know, Erica has a very good radio show. I've been on her show a few times and am aware of one a female commentator, and I'm not going to name her, but I have seen through social media that she is under attack by a number of men. I don't know the reason. She doesn't seem to fight back or anything, but I, I feel sympathetic nevertheless because she does a very fine job in the interviews that I've had with her. Yeah, and I, I think I know who you're referring to, and she is a, an amazing woman and and it's sad that that kind of thing happens but i think with regard to specifically you know what i've been through is, and having people that are in the entertainment industry that have kind of glommed onto this field that have made uh slanderous statements about me multiple times and this has been more than one person but to see that repeatedly is not only well, it's illegal. I mean, but but for whatever reason, people think that they, this is the Wild West and they can go out there and attack personally whoever they want to and get away with it. And that's where that whole sexism comes into play. It's because, you know, you've got this, well, she's a woman. She could have, she must have just slept her way to the top or this different kind of behavior, things that are out there and people that are, are, uh, mouthpieces for organizations are are saying these things, and I think that really needs to be addressed uh, because it's a poor reflection on the organization and the good people that work for the organization. And I think that the people that associate with people that are known bullies and abusers like that, I think that people out there that are listening, you need to look and pay attention and see how people behave on social media and see who they follow and how they treat other human beings. And then you need to look at the people that associate with them and say, aha, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't take this person seriously because they're, they're, uh, friends or associates with people that abuse people. Hmm. Interesting. I, you know, um, I've retired from radio, so I haven't been on for quite a while and everyone knows I've backed off of social media after the election. Oh my gosh, I couldn't stand the (laughs) infighting. It was, you know, I just, I don't have time for drama. So I completely move away from that. But you know, I kind of see it everywhere. It's, you know, almost this new thing called social media where you can say anything you want and it's completely, um, you know, there's no ramifications, you know? So, you know, there's a lot of problems, I think, with this field. It's, um, especially with the radio now that, um, the wild west, I think I heard it mentioned and I absolutely agree. Um, but again, it depends on 
you know, just where you're spending your time. I'm not going to spend it on Facebook drama. Can't, I can't deal with it. Um, and just, but I think it's a mindset that comes from this whole social media thing where people can say anything. And one thing I, I have noticed is that I, I just don't want to get into the tick for tack type of thing. So, you know, it's, um, you just kind of keep your yard clean and not pay attention, be so busy in your own yard. You don't know if the neighbor's grass is greener is the best way I can put it. And that's basically where I'm going. Um, I do see those problems. I do hear of radio shows that have said really mean, mean things about even what people look like. And it's horrible, horrible at the depths that, you know, people will go, you know, for what a rating attention. Why would they even do this? It's something I don't understand. So, you know, I, I just don't know how to fix it. So, well, you know, I think I, just I think in the stay classic, away from it. the classic definition, uh, of the psychologist would be projection. They're basically identifying aspects of the other individual uh, that they're not comfortable with in themselves. And so that comes out as, as a form of attack. And unfortunately, there's a lot of, of, of people that live very shallow lives um, that need to project uh their inadequacies onto other people to, in order for them to feel to feel um, worthy. <laughs> it all boils down to worthiness, I think, in a lot of ways. Well, but, and I'm uh, too busy. I don't want to get involved with that stuff. And, yeah. you know, and then it makes me sound like I'm, I'm not going to care about the problem. I can guarantee you that anyone that's ever called me with the problem, I've spent time with them and have done my best. You know, but I'm... As far as looking out here and seeing all this, again, I must just be in a, a decent peer group because I'm just not hearing a lot of this. And and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I'm going to say it is because, you know, I just we work. There's just no drama. And I work very closely with a lot of women and we just don't have this. And I just I don't know. I think we also have to be careful of, you know, what we do project, you know, how, how are we behaving? Because if we're not getting the reaction from the public and, and people we come across, strangers, if we're not getting the reaction from them we want, um, sometimes it's best to look at ourselves, right? Yes, well, that's true. I, yeah. I think that this is an endemic problem in our society that yeah. really totally needs agree, to. Totally agree, Kathleen, totally agree. And this needs to be dealt with. Uh, there is uh, a mindset where bullying is okay. Uh, and y you never used to see adult bullying uh, as far as, as I can remember. But now we have a society where people are less likely to interact with one another face to face we no longer partake in the activities that we did before we were wired up to the kind of technology that we have. And it seems to be desocializing people in our society and creating this problem where people feel comfortable bullying one another, where people behave in a very immature way. Let's cover that in more detail in the next segment. I want to say a few things. We've got Kathleen and Chase and Erica and Jean and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphic app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that. 
www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Attention investors, 2017 is the year of Trump and financial markets are rising at all time highs. But economic uncertainty may be greater than after any election in our lifetime. And as retirement approaches, there's little time to recover your losses. You need to hedge against uncertainty. That means transferring part of your retirement to physical gold and silver stored where you can actually hold it in your hand and get it fast in any disaster. It's a perfect time to buy. Prices are low and expected to climb. Make Augusta Precious Metals, your personal gold and silver provider. Augusta cares for your financial position and helps you make good decisions. And they're A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Get Augusta's free gold and silver IRA guide. What you learned could help you weather any economic storm. There's no obligation. Just call toll free. Call 855 222 5857. That's 855 222 5857. Again, 855 222 5857. Trust Augusta. Protect your retirement today. In these uncertain times, it makes sense to have a sustainable backup method to cook food and boil water. If your current plan includes using a fuel-burning stove or cooking over an open fire, then there's a much better way. The Minuteman Rocket Stove is a biomass-burning cooking stove that only requires small quantities of sticks and twigs for fuel. The Minuteman Stove is easy to use, smokeless, portable, powerful, and sustainable. For the finest in survival cooking stoves and fire starters made right here in the USA, go to MinutemanStove.com. That's MinutemanStove.com. Hi there, Dick Allgaier here. I was a mainstream television news reporter for over three decades. I normally never do commercial endorsements. I am very skeptical of health supplements, but a friend of mine told me about his experience with Synergy One, so I purchased a bottle, and my wife and I have been using it for a few weeks now. I very much dislike so-called energy boosters, those little energy drinks that have caffeine and guarana and other things that make your heart race. This is not that. My experience with Synergy One has been great. My mood is better. My joints feel better. I have more vigor, more stamina, way increased productivity. My wife and I both noticed that we even dream more. So I recommend Synergy One. It's really good stuff. I'm having great results with it. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. A reminder again that if you want to hear the After the Paracast podcast, you must be a member of the Paracast Plus at plus.theparacast.com. Plus dot the paracast.com, the women's round table with Erica, Chase, and Kathleen. And of course, unfortunately, in the UFO field and online in general, people, I guess because of the anonymity of the internet, can behave badly. It's all over the place. I mean, to some degree, it happens in forums too. We sort of put the reins on it in the paracast forums, we give people freedom but we don't allow them to be excessive about what they do, and we put a stop to it. So I'm not surprised when I hear things like that. Yeah, no, also the reverse is true. I mean, I've been uh, chastised for some of the things that I've said, even though uh, they were meant in jest. I've had women totally attack me. (laughs) How dare you say something like that? (laughs) What have you said, Chris, that did this? Let's start some trouble. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to, no, 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 I'm not going to go there. Uh, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> but uh, shall we say it's the wife of a, a, a uh, former publisher of a popular uh, magazine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
I and, think uh, we know I made who some that comment is. Comment like, uh, you know, you must have dropped a stitch in your knitting, or just some, you know, really stupid, you know, kind of ironic, you know, tongue in cheek, uh, possibly a little bit out of place comment. And I'll tell you, man, did I get? I was like, oh boy, yeah, I really got to rethink this social media thing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was totally taken it was seriously and like I was being misogynist and being a, you know, and that's one. This particular incident actually is one of the things that uh, prompted me to even consider, you know, uh, approaching uh, all of you about having this roundtable because, you know, I see that happen with women all the time. And when it happens to a guy, it's like comes out of the blue, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, turnabout's fair play. You know, that that made me the, the lesson to be learned, obviously, from that is to be very, very careful. Choose your words wisely. Uh, think twice before you type uh, or hit enter. Uh, and, uh, of course, it hasn't worked. I, I, I've gotten even in way more trouble, uh, not necessarily from women, but but just in general since then. So uh, I guess the lesson wasn't effectively learned for me. But <laughs> well, I think, though, Chris, I admire the fact, though, that you're you're willing to kind of call out uh, questionable behavior. And I think that's a good trait. I think that, you know, it, it, we need to also we need to do that, I think, instead of just turning a blind eye to some of these issues that are, are happening, you know, like I said, and I've said this a million times on my radio show every week, we need to address them. And I can't tell you the, the emails that I get or the Facebook messages from people, women that have been through similar circumstances in the field and are, are they just want somebody to share their experiences with and they want to move forward in a positive direction, but they've, they've reached out for help and if not necessarily gotten that. And so I hope that we can address problems and we can make better decisions about who we associate with and how they treat people. And we can have some strategies for dealing with all of this in a positive and productive way that instills a sense of empowerment to people that we're working with. Right. Yeah, that's I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, individual interaction uh, between people. Uh, you know, obviously, you're not going to you know, inspire everybody that you encounter. In fact, you you may uh, you know piss some people off or get them angry at you. I, I'm I'm looking at it from my perspective. Of course, I am very abrasive. I, I I tend not to be as diplomatic in situations as I probably should be. So I tend to to be more of a kind of a lightning rod for for this sort of thing. So I may be uh, in a position where I'm not, I can't comment for you know the the subculture uh, at large uh, because. I, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of my own little sort of animal running around a muck. Uh, but um, I think in general, yeah, I think it's important. Uh, I've always said that we should select our um, inspiration, our, our sources, and uh, the things that, that really um, educate us. I think we should uh, be very, very selective in, in who we tend to be influenced by. Uh, I think that's the bottom line. And, and I think generally we, we always have to keep in mind, you know, we got to keep our eye on the uh, on the goal here and uh, and keep toting, toting the rock down the field. We're attempting to ascertain clarity answers, uh, the truth, uh, these are very, very important um, underpinnings for everything that we do, and we always have to keep all this kind of front and center, uh, even in dealing with interpersonal relationships with people that may not not agree uh, with us wholeheartedly. I, I, you know, it's important to always keep that we're all really on the same team. Hopefully, you know, going after the same goals and pulling the the oars in the in the same direction. I mean that. You know, and, and oftentimes when I find myself uh, in a, in a in a place that feels like it's going into some sort of conflict or con confrontation, I always bring that uh, that whole aspect to the to the forefront. Hey, we're on the same team. We want the same thing. We're, we're attempting to do this in our own individual ways, but but we have a, a you know a unified collective goal in mind here. Let's you know not lose sight of that, and that tends to actually be a very effective way to to uh, as a steam valve for tension or or to help uh, sort of ratchet down the uh, uh, the rhetoric and that sort of thing. So that because that, that it's may a be... professional response, it's professional and mature. 
basically it's it's absolutely professional standards well when in doubt always uh, whip out you know the, the bottom line and then the core of 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 what motivates us to even be you know involved in this there's a lot of closet people that are involved but it's it's another thing to actually you know put your name out there write articles do radio uh appear uh at conferences to dovetail your your efforts with other investigators and researchers around the world that's that's a big step from just being someone that's you know kind of really really passionately interested in the subject but doesn't have the balls or the cojones again using male uh male <laughs> terminology uh, it's funny how you know male terminology uh, there's very little female terminology that well uh, there's and we there's like some. it that way you can yes. use that we like it that way you see well, that Watching Chris dig a deep hole. Yeah, it, it is kind of entertaining right now, actually. Well, no, I, I use I use those analogies very specifically because it shows you the kind of gender uh, slant that we have in our culture, and uh, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of courage to take that next step from being a closet buff, someone who may have a, an infinite amount of knowledge more than some experts even, and take that step and then and, and put yourself out in the public eye and uh, open yourself up for god knows what kinds of of uh responses that you have from out there especially now with social media i mean i'm just horrified (laughs) at some of the things that i see out there it's like whoa and that person isn't even using an avatar they're saying it you know with their real name it's like right right (laughs) horrible we got more to come two more segments with chase kathleen and erica And Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and slingbows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. Warning, if you're drowning in debt you can't afford, do not let the credit card companies trick you into thinking that you have to pay it all back. Because you don't. What the credit card companies don't want you to know is that there's actually a way to get debt-free without paying off your entire debt or going bankrupt. If you have $5,000 or more in credit card debt, you now have the right to settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. For free information, call Credit Associates now. 1-800-958-9659. We'll even show you how much money you could save. If you can't afford to pay off all your debt, 
Do not let the credit card companies trick you into thinking that you have to. Call Credit Associates now for free information on how to get debt-free faster than you ever thought possible without debt consolidation or bankruptcy. We depend on your success and offer a guarantee, so there's no risk. For free information, call now. 1-800-958-9659. That's 1-800-958-9659. 1-800-958-9659. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Chris, are there any questions there in our remaining two segments that might be relevant to anybody's research or anything like that? We have uh, quite a number of questions. Uh, again, I don't think that they're really dealing with with the nuts and bolts aspect of our, our you know forum but our, our round table but this one comes from jimmy who's been a long time poster at forum.theparacast.com where our listeners get a chance to uh post questions for our guests um he's been a, a poster here for almost four years he doesn't come out of the woodwork very often but this one brought him out so uh here we go ladies what's your opinion on who is behind the abduction phenomenon and what it is its purpose. And, uh, and then it goes into a an opinion that you might have on David Jacobs, et cetera, many thanks. Who wants to tackle that, Kathleen, since you're yeah. kind of... <laughs> yes, the- I would like very much to tackle that question. Okay. I don't think that you can state uh, one who is behind this. There, there are many, many things going on here. It's much more complex than most people have ever imagined. Uh, we have everything going on from interdimensional beings who might be like the, the Celtic brownies, uh, who, can, who are tricksters, who can take a variety of different forms. They're shapeshifters. They, they might be negative all the way to uh, what appear to be astronauts coming here from another solar system. And so uh, it's a variety of things. There are some positive. There are some negative. Most experiencers who have taken part in uh, a number of studies will state that it is uh, both positive and negative. Uh, There are more who believe that it is positive than negative. On uh, MUFON's recent study, there were 10% who felt that it was evil. So there is a small percentage who believe that they are dealing with an evil force, and they may be. This may be the same kind of thing that you read about in the Bible. The Bible calls it demons. Other people would call it negative parasitic entities from a, the astral realm, for example, which are different. And it appears that many of our visitors possess technology that allows them to travel interdimensionally. And this would be the reason that they're able to pass through solid surfaces to enter into experiencers' homes. Uh, so it's very complex, it's very complicated, and there are a variety of different things going on. 
no one size fits all answers. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Chase, what do you think? I actually agree 100% with Kathleen. And this is exactly what we're finding out is that, uh, you know, the people that are coming forward, the experiencers don't tell the exact same story. And there's many different experiences and very grateful that you can go on the MUFON website and fill out a questionnaire from Denise and Kathleen, who have spent so much time working on this whole phenomena. And now that we're actually dealing in and, and getting statistics and gaining information from these surveys, we're going so much further. And I couldn't help but be proud when I heard uh, Kathleen, you know, using terminology that was absolutely forbidden in ufology 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And that's how much we've grown. And it's by no mistake from, you know, just absolutely tenaciously getting in there and understanding what we're investigating. And let me say that Alan Hynek and Jacques Vallée were aware of all of this. Oh, Dr. Yes. Dr. Berthold Schwartz uh, made the statement that ufology tended to be nuts and bolts oriented, but unless ufology would look at the, the psychic phenomena, this high strangeness phenomena, we will never have the answers to our questions. It's exactly. kind of nice to see people like Jacques Vallée come back into the field now that, um, you know, we've come full circle with some of his opinions and some of his conclusions. Awesome. He was ahead of his time. Sure yeah. was. Yeah, but he's he's going to be jumping right into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, how about I put this, the frying pan, the furnace, and the nuclear reactor when he <laughs> speaks at this upcoming contact in the desert, which uh, when I saw that, I thought that I had died and gone to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I, it blows my mind that that particular, that particular podium is going to have uh, Jacques Vallée on it after it's had some of the most outrageous and, uh, and just over-the-top bad sci-fi presenters uh, that anyone uh, could imagine. And if you'd like, I will start rattling off names. Um, I'd rather not. Uh, but it just kind of it – does, it doesn't make you wonder whether <laughs> he has a new book coming out or not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's could... my impression that he is of the mindset, and I think that people that have worked around him as well, that there is something that needs to be – really taken seriously now, especially more than ever. And I think that's where Kathleen and her work and the work of free and different organizations and researchers, we need to really embrace this. And we need to, instead of just sitting behind a computer and, and looking at an, a single case and then putting it away, we need to analyze the data. We need to do field research studies. We need to look at experiencers and all that they have been through. And we need to delve a little bit deeper and perhaps steer things off into a different direction and in include what we would call the paranormal because it in all likelihood is probably all one and the same or many different aspects that we need to take seriously. But yay, we need <laughs> yay. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh man. I sound like I've been listening to myself for 30 years with that comment. <laughs> I, I totally agree. And uh, your comment about Kathleen uh, using terminology and uh, what if in about, uh, you know, possibly other dimensionals, which ties into valet, whatever it is, whether it's the gin, Rosemary Guy, uh, Ellen Guiley is touting the possibility that maybe we're dealing with uh, another culture's version of, of uh, paranormal entities. I think, I think it's totally wide open. And uh, Chase, I think your, your comments are well taken as well. That, that we're, we're, it's a brave new world. And it seems like every so often the field goes through this sort of reevaluation of itself and then new terminology, new approaches, new thinking slowly is like in a grudgingly sort of way is, is kind of allowed to enter the lexicon. And, and uh, man, if I have something to do with that, I, I, I will really be happy because, man, I'll tell you, I've been. I've been pumping this one for ever since I got involved. Uh, within two weeks of my first, you know, investigation, um, I realized that aliens from another planet was just uh, woefully inadequate. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, well, here's a question for for you all. Um, where do you draw the line of credulity? Now, we have individuals saying that uh, they've been on Mars as a, a an officer for the government, U.S. government or dark state or whatever, for 20 years. Um, you have people claiming that uh, uh, they've discovered the God particle, the Ganesh particle at Area 51. You have people that said that they uh, were time travelers at six years old back to the Gettysburg Address. You have people that are stating that uh, um, they were trained uh, for their Martian uh, excursion by Ed Dames and Barry Satoro or Barack Obama and uh, uh, some other time traveler uh, were part of the class. Where do you draw the line of credulity and where do you think the field should draw the line? Let's pause before we have the answers. (laughs) The pause that refreshes or we take a refreshment while we pause. I don't know which one. Erica Lukes, Chase Klotsky, Kathleen Martin, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, you're in the podcast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive PowerCast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the PowerCast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a PowerCast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the PowerCast. You go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. In these uncertain times, it makes sense to have a sustainable backup method to cook food and boil water. If your current plan includes using a fuel-burning stove or cooking over an open fire, then there's a much better way. The Miniman Rocket Stove is a biomass-burning cooking stove that only requires small quantities of sticks and twigs for fuel. The Miniman Stove is easy to use, smokeless, portable, powerful, and sustainable. For the finest in survival cooking stoves and fire starters made right here in the USA, go to MinutemanStove.com. That's MinutemanStove.com. Did you know there's a new group of water contaminants with unknown health effects? These emerging contaminants lurking in your water may include prescription, over-the-counter drugs, and new types of herbicides and pesticides. ProPure's improved Pro 1 G2.0 filter meets NSF 401 standards to help reduce these emerging contaminants. To find out more, visit your authorized ProPure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. That's P-R-O-P-U-R-U-S-A.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you have the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. You know, as part of Hollywood for a long time, I've seen my fair share of celebrities get in trouble with the IRS. Well, there's one name I trust, the Tax Defense Group. They're the most trusted name in tax. So if you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS, you really need to call my friends at the Tax Defense Group. Ignoring the IRS is not the solution. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, seize your home or business. But the Tax Defense Group could put a stop to all of that and tailor a program that would reduce your tax debt to pennies on the dollar. you got to love that. So don't just take my word for it. Call 
Call them. Find out for yourself. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And they're open 24 hours a day because they know that tax debt doesn't sleep either. Call now for your free and confidential tax analysis from the most trusted name in tax. Call 800-361-6907. 800-361-6907. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. Hi, this is James Fox from Chasing UFOs. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So we had a long question from Chris. Who wants to step up with an answer? Where do we draw our line of credulity? Oh, wow. That's such a good question, and it's an important one. I think it, it's it's hard because we're researching things that nobody is – I mean, we're breaking ground. And so – while we we always need to verify and fact check and and reach out and do the homework and and have a good idea of where a person is coming from their background uh is there how can we validate their story but then you do hear you know people that worked at SRI you do hear what they did back in the 70s 80s i mean well, there's so many things that we don't know we just have to keep one foot on the ground keep our our mind open to things and who knows where that will lead. But I think it's important when you've got people that have worked in this in specific areas like Kathleen and different people like you, Chris, who's done a lot of stuff with the cattle mutilations. I mean, it's, we take all of your input and really define the picture and look at, look at the data. And I think that's important. I think that this field has had a, a long time problem with people who perpetrate hoaxes for attention or for monetary gain or for whatever ever it's for, and nobody makes a lot of money doing it. But I suppose they enjoy the attention. I would like to see a return to the times when people were asked to take lie detector tests. I would like to see people who are trained in FBI lie detector tests uh, body language evaluation of a person's statements to determine whether or not they're using truthful body language, voice stress analysis tests on these voices to find out if they really are telling the truth or not. Some of these stories sound so very preposterous that it's hard to know, but you can't come out against someone unless you have evidence that their statement is false. So you have to just have a very large gray basket and wait for someone who has the funding to step forward uh, to do these types of tests. Ooh, I like that. And, and take it one step further. It'd be nice to have some sort of august uh, body of respected individuals that maybe would uh, pass you know, some sort of have some sort of process to certify to at least the best of our abilities, uh, the authenticity of, of, of particular claims. Um, I think the UFO Hall of Shame was a very rough, kind of gross, unstandardized, undifferentiated way to do that. But I really do think that we need a way to, uh, uh, you know, it's so many people interested in this field for the first time, kids especially, they go onto the internet and they hear all these outlandish claims. They see all these hoaxed videos. And because they don't really know anything about what they're interested in here with this subject matter, they buy into anything that conforms to some sort of weird aspect of their belief system. And, and people tend to look for a validation of what they feel you know, is going on. But wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to certify 
particular individuals after a vetting process, like uh, Colonel X with Anthony Sanchez and the, the Dulce Base new informant or Corey Good or Dan Burrish, uh, these types of people. Show us your, your separation uh, agreement with the government, your DD-214. Uh, show us some, some sort of anything, anything that supports this totally sci-fi scenario that you're presenting the public uh, with a straight face. I think there re- we really need <laughs> some sort of – it's not certification, but uh, some sort of impartial jury that's going to say, pay attention to this guy. He may be on to something or we should believe this guy versus – this particular person is coming across like a, you know, like a total crack and, and don't, you know, don't buy into it. I mean, is there a way to ever do that, do you think? I think that's going to be a tough one, but I think what we can do that will be really effective, and I've been trying to do this on every radio show or whenever I'm speaking, is point people towards good research, which is Project Heshtalan for 30 years. I mean, you've got 30 years of data where they there have been scientists from all over the world They're collecting data. They've found four different types of light phenomena that they feel behaves intelligently. This is what we need to do. We've also seen Erling Strand and his team of researchers. Every year they teach science camp to all the university students. And so they're instilling a sense of importance of the scientific method. And they're also letting people know, kids, that this is where we need to focus our research. And I think that's what we need to do in America. I think that's what we need to do as individual researchers and organizations and just point people in the right direction. Who wants to speak next? Well, I want to weigh in and just say, and at the same time, we have a black world and black projects that we know the government is not telling us about and funding at a great rate. This is evident every time you drive up to Area 51 and as of, you know, what, a year and a half ago, they would say there is no base and you're standing right in front of it. So I think there are many things going on that we're not told about. But I agree. Some of these bold statements that get a lot of attention um, just need more scrutiny. It's why I insist that, you know, investigators, our goal should be admissibility and meeting a burden of proof uh, before we throw cases out there like this. And we just have to keep being examples and, and keep pushing the narrative on what's acceptable and what's not. Accentuate the positive. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it seems to be the theme I've had through this whole show. Um, To be honest with you, I thought we were going to talk about accomplishments of women in ufology. I had no idea it was more of this. I literally, you know, was coming here with wonderful things to say about women in ufology like Marina Popovich. You know, just think about this woman who holds aviation records and out at the KGB and talks about UFO phenomena and is a cosmonaut. Just some of the big, momentous achievements of women in ufology. So can we do that next time, guys? Yeah, that's, yeah, honestly, part two, absolutely. Every note I have is, you know, you know, fault me for it, please. I have no problem with that. I, I really try to live my life with a very positive attitude and looking for, you know, the good stuff in others. You know, I'm kind of known as the cheerleader out here. And we all know my favorite color is glitter, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, and I'm not trying to make light. It's just I love what I do. I don't want to be unhappy in my work. I think we all feel that same way. I think I know I'm an incredibly positive person. And and but I, I also think that we need to it's important. We've had the opportunity for the past two hours to have this dialogue and to talk about things. And I think that that's more of a service for younger people. And we can hopefully come on the show again and talk about Ann Druffel or talk about Jenny Randall's or some of the, the yeah, brilliant just, people, you know. Absolute pillars, not pioneers, pillars of of the field. Andruff is one of the most respected people in the field, in my eyes, and a a true inspiration. And one of the high points of my ufological career was when I got a chance to finally meet her. (laughs) And she was passing around the original Polaroids of the Heflin shots, including the the, the last one, which very few people remember. Oh, is, wow. Is, I mean, I'll tell you, that was a high point in my, my ufological life. So there. So That's there, by the way, Ann Druffel was on the PowerCast a little over 10 years ago. So check our archives and you'll see the episode. Erica, where can we find more of the stuff you do? 
ufoclassified.com and my shows every Friday night at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on KCOR. Chase, where can we find more of your stuff? At chaseklitzky.com and also the field reports, all one word, uh, .com, where you can check out a lot of um, the latest updates on what we've been doing. Kathleen, where can we find your stuff? At Kathleen-Marden, M-A-R-D-E-N dot com. And you can find more of our stuff on Twitter. Look for the Paracast on Twitter. Look for our two Paracast fan clubs on Facebook. And check out the Paracast Plus at P-L-U-S dot theparacast dot com. We have a second radio show after the Paracast. That's part of the package. If you subscribe, you get the commercial-free version of this show for a low price beginning at $1.49 a week plus dot theparacast.com. Erica Lukes, Kathleen Martin, Chase Kletsky, thank you all for joining us on the Paracast. Thank you. Thanks, guys. It was 100% my pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. It was a great pleasure to be with you again. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.